codes. What are UMIs? UMIs are also known as molecular barcodes or random barcodes. So why we use UMIs? It is useful in three scenarios particularly. When you are having very low input sample, when you, when you are going for a deep sequencing of RNA uh, libraries and for the detection of ultra low frequency mutations in D DNA sequencing, you will use uh, UMIs. In addition to that, UMI analysis is an excellent QC tool of library complexity. So, at what step we are using unique molecular identifiers in our sequencing? UMIs are incorporated in sequencing libraries before PCR amplification step. So, before PCR amplification itself, you are tagging your uh, sequence with UMI. So, it will correct your PCR and sequencing errors so that it improves accuracy and quantification and uh, but we need to pay special attention in the bioinformatics pipeline. So these are the adopters. These are the indices which you are using for patient identification. Apart from that, you are using UMA, unique molecular identifier for each molecule. So you can use uh, single or duplex UMA for your sequencing. So duplex UMA you are attaching UMA tag on both ends. Unique molecular identifiers will have a random sequence of bases. So if you have DNA molecules like this, one, two, three, so you are using, you are using different UMIs. This yellow color represents one UMI, blue color represents I'll say UMI two, Red color represents UMI3. So after sequencing, you will gather all the uh, yellow UMIs at one place, blue UMIs at one place, and red UMIs at one place. Then you, you will check for the uh, mutation if it is present in all the strands. If it is not present in all the strands, that means that is not a true mutation. That is uh, maybe due to sequencing error or PCR amplification error. Let's see this example. This is original DNA fragment, okay, which is carrying a true mutation, which is there on both the strand. So you have sequenced it. When you sequence it, this particular mutation should be there on forward strand as well as on reverse strand, right? These red dots indicate the uh, sequencing or PCR error. It's not a true mutation because it is there randomly on one strand, okay? It's not there in all the strands. So when you do a bioinformatics pipeline, when you run a bioinformatics pipeline for error correction with UMIs, only the true variant will be called as a true mutation. All these red dots, that is PCR errors, sequencing errors, errors introduced during the sequencing workflow will be neglected. So ultimately you will be calling a true variant as true mutation in this patient. This is possible because you have already tagged your sequence with UMI only the sequence with UMI should be sequenced and if it is sequenced properly then the same mutation will carry forward that's how we are taking this mutation as true mutation take uh, take the other example this is another patient samples DNA which is not having any mutation here but when you sequence, you are getting mutations here, random calls. Here also you are getting. So when you just take uh, these two separate strands, that is forward strand separately and see, then you tend to neglect these random calls here. 
and if you take only reverse tendency then you tend to take this call because it is appearing in all the reverse trends so you'll take it but when you combine and read this uh, uh, dna that is the forward stand and reverse stand when the mutation occurs it should be there on the forward stand and reverse stand also so it is not there on the one of the stand so it should be neglected whereas here in this scenario it was there on both the stand forward as well as reverse stand so it was considered as a true mutation so again for better understanding after pcr amplification you don't know whether these are the these are all or pcr duplicates are your uh, true copies of your original dna so without umis you cannot say you can okay all these are uh, uh, your dna so you take uh, in silico by in silico analysis all this will be reduced to one molecule when you tag your uh, sequence with umi then you can differentiate them you can differentiate based on umis so umi 1 2 3 so these will be grouped according to the umi signature so this bundle is for one molecule this bundle is for other molecule this is for third molecule so you are taking three different sequences here which are correct so now we'll see with an example so you had a mutation here and randomly mutation here so without umis you tend to take uh, this strand with mutation and this strand also with mutation and uh, some of the strands without mutation you take you tend to take all these three with umis when you are checking for the presence of mutation in all the strands this particular umi it carries mutation only on one strand it is not there in rest of the strands so it may not be a true mutation it may be uh, simple mis misincorporation by dna polymerase right if it is a true mutation it will be present on all the strands so only this uh, umi has been considered as a true call so we need uh, to have a special protocol for uh, umi processing after tagging with umi you need to deduplicate it also so that will be done by your informatics pipeline so after demultiplexing you you will create uh, bams then after creating bam files you need to uh, deduplicate all your duplicate uh, duplicating errors in your pcr so deduplication is nothing but removing your pcr duplicates with errors okay so error correction happens after generating bam files so again you you uh, take all the read families together combine both uh, forward and reverse strand then finally you will call that variant as a true variant